I'm Jeff Philbin, and this is Dinner Diaz, bringing you simple ideas for dinner every day. And today, we're at the docks. Gonna be bringing you a seafood recipe that you'll wanna try. And everything you need to know from cleaning a fresh catch through cooking it in the kitchen without firing up the grill. Plus, secrets to selecting shellfish, how to pick and prep the perfect crab. Today, we're starting the show in Madeira Beach at Hubbard's Marina. This family-owned fishing staple has been around nearly 100 years, and we're here to meet a fourth-generation Hubbard. Yes, Captain Dylan. His good catch fishing forecasts air every Friday and Saturday morning here on Fox 13. Signing off with his famous catchphrase, if you're too busy to go fishing, then you're just too busy. Captain Dillon, I hope you're not too busy for us. No, not today. Looking forward to showing you some family recipes and picking out some fresh fish and shellfish and having a good time. I can't wait. Now, if you can't be out on the water catching that fresh catch, got any tips for us to be able to find some great seafood? Well, if you're just too busy to go fishing, we've got a solution for that too. We can walk down to the fish market and we'll go over how to pick out some really good eating fish. Sounds like a plan. Let's do it. The sign. Yep. Fresh fish? Oh yeah, fresh as you can get, fresh off the boat. We get deliveries all the time, so I'm excited to show you what we got. No, I was really talking about the whole, I can tell Beth that I actually caught it today. I mean, you can pull that off. The taste will back you up for sure. Let's do this then. All right, after you. Captain Dillon, now this is calling my name here, my friend. Oh yeah. Fresh fish, what are we working with here? Well, this is as fresh as it gets. We've got plenty of red snapper today, and we've got some fresh red grouper. As we talked about outside, these are fresh right off the boat. So some boats bring back a big catch of a certain species, or other boats will bring back a big mixture. Today, we're just down to the red snapper and red grouper until a big delivery comes later today. But those red grouper look like they're calling our name. I mean, that is the one right here for me. How do we know which is the one that we want the most? Well, here, all the seafood is gonna be fresh right off the boat, so it's kind of easy. We can pick any of the uh, fish in the whole case, right? Other places you go, you might not be familiar with the freshness or kind of their quality. So the first thing is gonna be your nose, right? You can tell when you walk into a place how fresh it is. is do you get that strong smell or is it smelling clean, right? Yeah. Uh, then from there, it's visual. Uh, the color, some people really emphasize the color. To me, that's not as important because when you ice a fish down, it can alter the color anyway. But I'm looking for a good consistent color gradient and then also the eyeballs can tell a lot as well. Well, All right. these fish were caught in deeper water, so they're gonna have a more bulged out eyeball. And sometimes people freak out about that, but it's really the clarity of the eye okay. is what you're looking for. If it gets really milky and kind of more uh, translucent, it's not so great, right? Okay. You're looking for that darker color. And, you want uh, them to almost be looking right back at you. Oh yeah, if they're All staring right. into your soul, it's a nice fresh fish. I've been seeing <laughs> this one here. This was the one that's staring at me, so. Yeah. It's You're, calling your name, all right. It's calling our name. It's yeah, and then we've got plenty of fresh shellfish to pick out, and that's all good stuff there, too. So I see some oysters, and I see some stone crabs, too. Oh, yeah, the stone crab is awesome. I always go medium or large. Some people want to see those big claws on their plate, but for me, as long as there's plenty of meat in the shell, I'm good to go. And these oysters. Oh, yeah. That old uh, wise tale, right? The month had to end in ER for you to eat oysters. Well, in today's world, modern refrigeration, that's out the window. So I'm eating oysters year round. Let's get the shuck out of here. Captain Dell, we've got the grouper ready to go, but it's not quite ready just yet. What do we got to do next? Now we got to fillet it. And Chris here, the expert, is going to make this look really easy and fast. It is a little easy once you've had a lot of practice like Chris, but over time you get better and better. Starting out, you gotta go slow. The trick is to try to maximize the yield. You wanna try to get as much meat off the bone as possible, and that's the goal here. Now how big of a fish do we have here? This is about a three and a half pound red grouper, and they have typically about a 50 to 60% yield depending on the species. Generally with grouper, we get about a 60% yield. So this three and a half pound fish, we should get a solid three pounds of meat off that filet. So that'll serve about a family of four. It should be close. I mean, it depends on the family. My family, we're gonna need a little bit more meat uh, cause I'm a bigger guy. But hey, some people, about a pound, pound and a half is a good rule of thumb right. per person. And plus we've got the stone crabs, we've got some oysters oh, yeah. and we've got the grouper. 
think we're gonna be all right. That's the thing. I mean, here you got shrimp, you got a lot of other seafood you can pair with the fish and really kind of spread out the buffet, and then you don't need as much uh, fish meat. I love it. A nice seafood bounty here. Yes, sir. And look, he's already got all of the filet already on both sides, already portioned up. And now what is he doing? So he's already cut the filet off, and with that, he also removed the rib cage. So now he's gonna take the skin off the back of that filet, because all we need is that filleted fish because we're gonna broil it. Now, once he's taken the skin off, the rib cage off, he's gonna make a small little V-shaped cut down the middle of the backbone of the filet to remove some of the pin bones that run from the rib cage into the filet. Now that he's done that, we've got a boneless, skinless filet ready for the oven. Now. What could you do with the remains of the carcass of the grouper? So the carcass that we have here still has the cheeks in it and the throat. This is a three and a half pound grouper, so it doesn't have really substantial cheeks, but as you get bigger grouper, they get some really good sized cheeks. And those cheek meat are some of the best that, out there for sure. They look like little scallops and they're incredible. But the throat, even on this smaller grouper, can be removed and it's great on the grill. You can also fry them. They're a little tough in the oven, but really good eating for All sure. Right. And Chris is gonna make quick work of that. Still a little challenging for me, uh, but he's had a lot of practice, makes it look easy. So you could look this up on YouTube and there's lots of different videos out there to show you how to remove the collar or throat, but really good. Also, you could just take the backbone off and use the fish head for fish head soup if you leave the cheeks and the throat in there. Awesome. It looks like it's all ready to go. We're ready to rock and roll. And while we head back to the dinner dish kitchen, we're gonna take a quick break. Welcome back to Dinner Diaz and welcome into the kitchen, Captain Dylan Hubbard. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Oh, we're excited to have you. Today, Captain Dylan is sharing his expertise from decades of fishing. Not for how to land the perfect catch, though he totally could do that, but how to select and prepare seafood like a pro, even if your expedition is only as far as the store. Yep. Before the break, we were down at the docks at Hubbard's Marina itself, picking out red grouper, stone crab, and oysters. We then filleted, deboned, and skinned the grouper, and now we're cooking up our catch with a family recipe? Oh yeah, we're gonna take this red grouper and coat it in some mayonnaise and some extra special seasonings and uh, really make a great dish. Sounds like a plan. And uh, this is where the family secret comes this in. This is the family secret part. Coating in mayonnaise, and <laughs> the reason we do that is to lock in that moisture. Everybody likes a fried fish, right? And the main reason a lot of people like fried fish, in my opinion at least, is that crunchiness, yep. that texture, and that mayonnaise can kind of substitute that, and it cooks off. A lot of people are like, ew, mayonnaise. I'm not a huge mayonnaise fan myself. Yeah. Like, I'm not gonna be going crazy with the mayo if I'm making a sandwich or something like that, but this recipe, you want to be a little liberal with the mayonnaise just because it does cook off. It's not like you're ingesting all the mayonnaise that okay. you're putting on the dish. Now this is a recipe that's tried and true to your family. Oh yes. How far back does this recipe go? This goes all the way back. So uh, my grandmother uh, was a huge fan of specifically Hellman's mayonnaise. This Hellman's mayo. Okay. Hellman's mayonnaise. She's a Hellman's. You're a Hellman's family then? Uh, yes. Are we gonna have a problem? I, I, I don't think so, man. <laughs> I don't think so. You know, you, you know. I'm cool with trying things out. I am a Duke's boy. I'm just oh, gonna say it. Man. I am. I am. I am. You're, you're one of those. Huh? I'm, I'm one of those. <laughs> I am one of those. <laughs> nice. Coating, first step is always black pepper. Okay. Huge, huge black pepper fan. I've done the blackened seasonings, I've done some others, but for It wasn't me, grandma's way. It wasn't grandma's way that I recall at least, but everybody has their own family uh, nostalgia, right? And now we're gonna add a little bit of salt uh, after our pepper, just making sure that we have a little bit of salt on there. I go a little lighter with the salt myself just because I'm also gonna add some garlic salt, okay. right? So that's the recipe for success is just like for Captain Hubbard's recipes for everything he's making today <laughs> with all the ingredients, the amounts, and the directions conveniently ready for you to print. Just set sail for dinnerdeals.com. Grab your phone as if you're taking a photo and use it to scan the QR code in the corner of the screen. Yes, and then we did the one side, yep. mayonnaise, seasoning. Now we flipped them over and we're doing the second side same way. We're gonna stick these in the oven okay. and we're all prepped, ready to rock and roll. Perfect, so those are gonna go into the oven at what, yep. 450? 
Yeah, these, because they're a little bit thicker, I think we're going to do about 450. Okay. And uh, it's not a long time. And some people will ask, like, oh, what about I'm worried to overcook it? You, the thing with fish is uh, undercooking it's not a big deal, right? You can always pop it back in. Yeah. Uh, but you don't want to overcook it because you just went out there offshore. Totally. You worked really hard to catch these fish. You filleted them. And now you don't want to destroy your trophy cast. So, so we're going to monitor and we're going to watch this as they go into the oven to smell, sight, all of the senses oh, yeah. that we want to make sure they're going to be just right. We got those stone crabs from earlier too. Oh yeah, so now we've got the fish in. We're going to pop these stone crabs in. We've brought water to a boil. The stone crabs are easy because legally a crabber has to cook those crabs when they come in. Mm -hmm. So these crabs are actually already cooked. Okay. So you could take them out of the uh, fridge and you could go ahead and crack them and eat them now. Me personally, I don't like eating stone crabs chilled. Okay. I like them warmed up. So we're just gonna go straight in. Straight in. Okay. Biggest thing is making sure you don't splash. You're you're no, a pro no already. No splash. No splash. Our groupers in the oven. The crabs are cooking, and we still have our oysters to prep. Looks like we're gonna need a bigger plate. <laughs> we're gonna take a break and finish up our seafood spectacular when we come back. That's ahead on Dinner Diaz. Welcome back to Dinner Diaz, where we're cooking up crustaceans. Thanks, Thesaurus. Joining me in the kitchen is Captain Dylan Hubbard. You know him from his weekly fishing forecast here on Fox 13, and today he's sharing secrets to spectacular seafood. Before the break, we've prepared our red grouper, seasoning it with mayo, pepper, salt, and garlic salt, garlic and onion powder, and then baked it in the oven. How's it looking? It's ready to rock and roll. It's ready? Let's pull it out and check it, it out. Smells fantastic. Oh yeah, it's smelling up this whole kitchen nicely. And it looks even better than it smells. Oh, look at that. Look at that golden brown crust. Wow, look at that. That's Spectacular. beautiful. Spectacular. And oh. uh, very excited to bite into that. But we also have some other seafood that we're ready to eat as well. Uh -huh. We had these stone crabs that are ready to go. Yes, sir. What's the proper way to crack stone crabs? So it's there's an easy method. Some people will bring out the the, the crackers and they sit there and at the table and they're they're really working hard after it. There's yeah. an easy way to do this. So, so there is an easier way. Yes. Yeah, so I was raised. Uh, you take the stone crab out to the dock okay. uh, and you crack them out in the dock. Unfortunately, in my house now, don't have that luxury. But I go out to uh, the driveway and at the end of the driveway, just as good. Just yeah, as good. Just at the end of the driveway is where I normally okay. crack them. Uh, but it's really, really simple. If you use a hammer, it doesn't have to be a mallet or any special food hammer. I use the old uh, the old roofing hammer at the house, you know? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, You're using a roofing hammer at the house? I, in I the use, driveway? I use whatever rusted hammer is closest to me. As uh, as I prep my crab, I get really hungry and yeah. I'm very impatient as this well. This is so, it. All right. So I'm, I'm rushing out there with whatever heavy instrument I can use. I've even used a wrench before. Okay. Uh, but basically, you're making three hits. Right here, at this apex, uh, laying the, the claw down. Okay. And this little hump is where you hit it once. And then you turn it over and you hit the little crown, that little point one time. And then you lay down the knuckle and where these points come together is a third hit. So Love it. real, real simple. Nice crack there. And I just crack it once or more time just to make sure it's nice and easy when you get to the table. It's a little easier with the roofing hammer. If the roofing hammer is what helps you there for yeah, it. Yeah, and then a little crack here, and you're ready to rock and roll. So now uh, the goal is to try to keep it together, but sometimes they break apart like okay. that. But now you're ready to sit down, and it's all pre-cracked. Uh, so all the mess is outside in the driveway, and you're ready to rock and roll once you get into the house. Okay, okay. So real, real straightforward. I'll show you one more one time. One more time here. And then I'm going to let you do it once. So there's a crack. Moving it over. It's a little bit more tricky on this one. It takes a little bit more energy, but there's a crack. And then on the third one, just giving it a nice little crack. Okay. So that one's ready to rock and roll. You can tell it's all cracked That's on all the sides. That's ready to go. All right. Yep. So now it's your turn. It's my turn here. All Let's right. Let's see what you can do. All right. So we're going right here. Yep. Right on that hump. Right on that hump here. Yep. Wow, I went Perfect. a little deeper than I thought, but all right, so that's still good? Yeah, that works. Perfect. You can work with that for sure. Okay. And now you just roll it up so that little point is straight up and down, okay. and you want to give it a nice good tap without hitting your hand. See, this part is the harder yeah. one. I'm going to go this well, way. It's a little tricky. That, that's why it's somewhat helpful to try to keep that claw on there. Yeah, you so that way you have a little bit more, better control for a it. A little, little handle. Okay. And now you lay that part flat. Yep, perfect. Mm -hmm. And you want to hit right where those three edges come together. 
Perfect. Okay. Yep. And that's the goal. Here you're ready go. to rock and roll. It's like you're a professional crab crab. You know, I do like the crabs, but I also love oysters. We had those oysters from earlier as well. So I was thinking about a mini net for you for this one here. All right, so you're going to teach me I'm going to teach now. you a little bit All how right. it's so fun here because we love oysters at the house, and we do it quite a bit. And so okay. a traditional mini net here is really going to be three main ingredients. Red wine vinegar. Okay. Cracked black pepper. All right. And then it's shallots. That's okay. always going to be the base, okay? And the shallot's like an onion, right? It is. It's, it's, okay. it's from that family here. And I'm going to add just a little bit of some thyme. And then we're also going to play around with some jalapenos. I like that Just idea. a little bit. You a like little, jalapenos? Oh, a little bit of spice goes a long way. Okay. I, I'm a spicy guy, but my wife, not so much. So, so I have to dial it back a little bit when Well, I'm what's really nice is that I took the seeds out for this one here. If you want to okay. keep the seeds in and go spicier, you absolutely can. I took those seeds out, and at home, you could do the exact same thing. And then we're just going to have, because of the jalapeno, just a little bit of honey. Okay. That always is a good idea. Just a, Never right? a bad idea. Never a bad <laughs> idea with a little bit of honey. Okay. And all we're going to just do... Let's just give this a nice little quick little whisk. Okay. And when we show up an oyster, we're going to drip some of that in the shell. Yeah. So you're going to just okay. literally pour just a little bit into it there. So next step is shucking some oysters. Huh? Show us how that part is done. Okay. So you're an oyster lover too. So you, you might be faster at this than me. <laughs> and again, this is one of those things I talked about in the crabs. I'm, I'm shucking those or uh, cracking those out in the driveway. Yep. Normally this is over the water somewhere and uh, I've got a dirty hand from trying to go as fast as I can. Mm -hmm. So I've never done one of these in a the kitchen before. See, this now, is new to me. This is a, now our territory. Yeah. But and nice what's the and trick easy. here? So with the oyster, you go from the very back where the oyster comes to a tip. Mm -hmm. That's where you go in with the oyster knife. And it's a good idea to use a towel because sometimes you slip. Yeah. The towel is not so much for anything other than making sure if you slip, you're going to cut or you're not going to cut your hand. You're going to go into that oyster. Yeah. So you're creating a nice little barrier for safety. So that way yeah. that you don't puncture. Okay. And then once you go into the back, you get the knife in there mm -hmm. and you just twist the knife, get a little lift up, and then you go on the edge and do the same thing. Once you get into the oyster, you just scrape the top of the shell get that muscle disconnected yep so you've got that side and now you've got the oyster opened up and you give it a nice little scrape in here make sure there's no shell sometimes the shell breaks up a mm -hmm. little bit as you're shucking and you just clean it up so that it's totally disconnected and free floating it sounds like a plan. now it's ready for the mignette it, it is, that is how you pronounce that? it is a mignette there so Ooh, that looks good if you just do a little bit here and we're just gonna put just a tad bit in Ooh. and we're just gonna pour just a little bit over and again this that's is just ready for the plate. And now it's ready for the plate, but you Should gotta, I try it? You gotta go for it. Okay. Mmm. Right? Mm-hmm. It complements everything. That is awesome. It just accentuates everything. And if you accentuates. Accentuates everything. We're <laughs> accentuating it. all the flavors today. From grouper, stone crab, and now the oysters. Mm -hmm. And if you've just tuned in and want to see any of these recipes over again, or if you missed Captain Diller's tips on selecting seafood, watch Dinner Diaz again anytime over at YouTube. We're at Dinner Diaz. Browse our treasure trove of recipes, which is exactly what Luck Puck 13 did. They watched and made the gnocchi with braised short ribs shared by Martin De Jesus, the executive chef at Rooster and Till. They said, I've wanted to recreate this dish ever since I tried it. Wow. Best gnocchi dish I've ever had. And when we come back, it looks like I'll be taste testing the best seafood that I've ever had. That's ahead on Dinner Diaz. Welcome back to Dinner Diaz, the show that helps you solve the daily dilemma What's for dinner? And today, we've had some expert help from someone literally fresh off the boat, Captain Dylan Hubbard. He's been sharing his expert tips for landing the perfect fish from the safety of the store, and what to look for, and how to get it ready for dinner. And we've cooked up a tasty trio, red grouper, which we baked, and stone crab claws in our oysters with our beautiful mini net sauce. Where are you going first, my friend? I think I'm going to start with that grouper. All right, let's try do it. it out and see how that came out because it looks absolutely spectacular. Beautiful color. And I'm excited. Mmm. The crispiness is there. The seasoning. Mmm. It's right apart. But because of the simplicity, mm -hmm. the star is always going to be the grouper. You don't miss it. It's absolutely beautiful. I hate sometimes when fish gets so overloaded with other things happening. Yeah. And it's like, why? It's gone. Yeah. You've lost everything. The grouper is celebrated here. 
well done. This is killer. It came out really well. I'm very happy with that. But these stone crabs, these are the the, the creme de la creme. Are you ready for uh, one of those? Let's go. Let's All do right, it. So I always like to start off with the, the top piece. The, yeah, you want to separate your uh -huh. fish. You don't want to have any crab shells in there. But you pull off the big piece. Mm -hmm. That's always a good place to start. Make sure you've got your shells cleaned out mm -hmm. and uh, then you're ready to rock and roll. I kind of separate them and twist mm -hmm. and that'll pull off that extra piece. And then you're left with nothing but just claw meat. Pure, pure design. And to finish it off and make sure you don't have any shells, you just you dip it in this little, little, little butter dish right here. I mean, because, you know, who doesn't say anything's not yeah. good without butter? I mean, Melted butter and a little bit Come of garlic. On. Come on. Ready to rock and roll. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I think we did it. Um, yeah, we did. <laughs> so good, so good. Mm. In the mignonette, is that how you pronounce it? Am I am I doing that wrong? Mignonette. Mignonette. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll get it eventually. Mignonette. Yep. Now I already got to try it. You haven't tried it yet. I, you know what though? I can't eat alone though. So okay. that's the whole. Are we gonna cheers it? Oh, we're going to. I like it. That is. I like the way your mind works. This is. <laughs> this is everything here. That jalapeno. I want that jalapeno right there. Oh, good choice. Good choice. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Oh, yeah. That is a good dish. That it comes is together well. A seafood trio mm -hmm. like I've never had. Yeah, I love very it. Good. I love it. Thanks again to Captain Dylan Hubbard for his seafood secrets and this delicious recipe. Find out more about Hubbard's Marina and grab the recipe at dinnerdias.com. And don't forget to catch his fishing forecast every week on Good Day Tampa Bay here on Fox 13. I'm Jeff Philbin. Thanks for watching and see you next time with more Dinner Diaz.